Hi, this is Rick, your bicycle fitness coach. And as promised, here is part two. And again, stay tuned for part three, where we're going to get into insoles. So if you remember from part one, we discussed uh, this shoe. I'm not going to name the brand, but it was the issue. The issue was holes instead of slots. And these holes are moved a little bit too far forward to be able to get the client into the right position. Here is <clears throat> exactly the opposite. Here is a very good shoe. The only drawback is on this shoe, it's a little bit uh, narrower for wide feet. You want to get, uh, you have to have regular or narrow feet to fit this shoe. But what's important is look at the bottoms. Look at the slots on this guy. Look at the great amount of adjustability the bike fitters have to get this fit versus this fit. Again, always look for something like this. As an example, here's my shoes. These fit me. These are the Wides CX-238. And we'll get into what I've done to my cleats here in a minute. In my opinion, one of the best products out there, I've called it the product of the year, is the Patro cleats. Patro cleats or midfoot cycling cleats. Uh, what they are is that now to fix this shoe, again, if you like this shoe, fine. If it fits your foot, fine. For the fitter or for yourself to get your cleats fit correctly, you need to get a product like this, which can actually move the cleat further back into the right, the correct position. Um, they are, these uh, cleat adapters are used to move cleats into, there are two main positions, which we'll get into. And yes, for myself, I've been using them for over a year. Here's mine. You can see the Patrick cleat, <clears throat> midfoot cycling cleat adapter right here. I've moved mine back. And we'll get into the analysis and adjustments that I did. The picture to the left, look at A, B, and C. C would be normally where your cleat gets mounted on the three holes, your, your three cleat, like a uh, look heel or a Shimano SPDSL, would get mounted onto le uh, level C. If you're moving it back one Position would be B. Your move, it's it's actually the forward mount for the midfoot cycling cleat adapter. A would be the rearward mount. So B, you can, you can imagine you're moving the cleat plate, which is the cleat adapter, slightly back, and A will you be moving even further back. So now you have more adjustability, two mounts to forward and aft to move the cleat further back. The benefits. Well, the main benefit is uh, biomechanically, the foot is a uh, very unstable mechanism for transferring that much power to the pedals. So this helps foot stability because you're moving the cleat further back, you're putting the cleat under the metatarsals, or even further back in it into an even firmer or harder part of the of the foot. Uh, no need to buy an $1,100 pair of custom shoes that would have these holes mounted further back. Uh, I see a lot of triathletes telling me that they're in, they have better power over a longer distance because they're pedaling more effectively and efficiently with their quads instead of their calves. The only Slight drawbacks are if you stand up on the on the pedals, they're going to feel a little awkward at first. After the first ride, you get used to it. It's no big issue. The caveat is which mount do you have them in, A or B? We'll get into that in the next couple of slides. And it might require a new bike fit because you're moving the shoes further forward you're extending your range on your leg extension, so it might require some fine tuning of the saddle position. Um, it, 
I don't recommend these for criteriums where you're going fast, slow, fast, slow. They're more for a longer endurance a uh, example would be like uh, a training application like Ruby. Ruby has a lot of long, steady climbs on their indoor cycling application, and these are perfect for, for that. So more benefits. Move the cleat further away from hot spots. Several areas of uh, issue that the people come in all the time with, with uh, foot pain are metatarsalgia or sesamoiditis. Sesamoiditis is the inflammation of the two little sesamoid bones they're used for balancing on, on the foot. Once they get inflamed, they it takes a long time to make them feel better. It, it, it's a long, long process. We're talking about months. Icing, taking it easy on the, on the pedals, and it has to do with overuse uh, that issue. And you'll know you have sesamoiditis when you feel a burning pain or a sharp pain underneath the ball of your big toe. Uh, the next one, uh, metatarsalgia, would be a similar pain, but across more of the metatarsals. That's kind of the, the difference. Um, what you're doing is you're inflaming them, and it takes, again, a long time to uh, reduce the pain uh, in these, these cases. Um, this also, the cleat adapter also saves the triathletes calves for the run because you're taking the pressure off the calf. We're not getting again into that right now. I do cover that exclusively and extensively in the bike fitting course as to what happens and why that happens. And it also reduces the heel drop. So before you start, if you want to consider a uh, cleat adapter, you know, I want to also recommend that you start with marking your saddle in the current position, as well as marking your cleats. You see, I've marked my saddle in the current position with a silver Sharpie and the cleats as well. Positioning the cleat adapters, like we said before, there is the, I didn't put C on here, but there's a C which would be the, na the native cleat uh, where the cleat would fit directly onto the uh, shoe. In this case, this would be where C would be located. We have A and B. So I tried and tested all of the different positions, the adapter forward, cleat forward, adapter forward, cleat rearward, the adapter rearward, the cleat forward, which is the picture in the middle and the adapter rearward and the cleat rearward. So here are the results. The cleat, uh, the adapter forward and the cleat forward, uh, it's pretty close to the original position of mounting a cleat natively onto a shoe. I don't recommend it, it's not that much difference. You, you won't feel any difference, nothing, uh, nothing stands out as making any any change at all the adapter forward and the cleat rear now we're moving the cleat a little bit further back it felt better but not enough again of a difference to from the regular position i don't recommend that either let's go to the number four the adapter rear and the cleat rear i could not get used to that extreme position for example when i stood up on the pedals the cleat was moved so far back that the foot wanted to tip forward aggressively, very uncomfortable position. I don't recommend that either. Where I did, I kind of split the difference. I positioned it so the adapter was rearward. Show you here. I've moved the adapter to the rear position and I moved the cleat all the way forward. And that gave me the most natural feeling. I tested the, my FTP. There's been no drop in power. I can actually hold a higher power for longer with a cleat more effectively placed for my foot and my body geometry, biome biomechanics, how I ride the bike. I recommend starting with the adapter rear and the cleat forward. In summary, the best, most natural feel was adapter, rear, cleat forward. 
mandatory for these shoes or any other cycling shoes that have copied this design and have holes and have holes that are mounted more forward. You can, you can salvage the shoes, you can fix the shoes with cleat adapters. Perfect for TT, triathlon, indoor training where you're pushing higher power for extended lengths. We already talked about Ruby. Uh, not really required. Now they do have different models for SPDSL, Crank Brothers, Look, Garmin, Time, SPD, Speed Play, and Wahoo. Um, I don't really recommend MTB or SPD type because they are there's already plenty of uh, movement on the cleat up uh, forward and backward. You don't need uh, these for that. The other pedal systems, yes, they're, they're recommended. If you're having any of those issues, you wanna pedal more effectively, I recommend this, um, this product. Again, as we talked about, part uh, two is here. Part three is coming soon. We're gonna talk and discuss insoles, the good, the bad, what's recommended, why, etc. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, recommend to your cycling partners to take a look at if they have any foot cleat shoe issues. And we'll see you soon in the next video. For future reading, if you're more interested in looking at the midfoot cycling, you can pause this screen and look up these research papers, and I'll put the links in the description. Thank you.